Uh, this is Sparky Peter, my science laboratory in Liverpool, which also doubles as my mum's garage. And I'm going to take you through ring continuity testing. The first thing to point out is the fact that it's a dead test. And we can see in this case we're on a test board which is, you know, completely disconnected from the mains. But in other circumstances there might be a safe isolation procedure to go through. That's in another clip. And I'm emphasising the fact that it's a dead test. I've got my do not switch on sticker up there just as a reminder of what we're about. Um, the instrument that we're going to use for this test is the uh, low resistance function on the multifunction instrument in front of you. And you can see uh, I've already nulled out the leads on the instrument to give a zero value. You might think, why isn't he testing that socket up uh, that's below the meter? Well, that particular one is on a separate radial circuit. And the ring main consists of those three sockets there, and that is a spur down below. So in here we expect two lots of everything, three lots of everything in there, because one, one of those connections goes down to the spur, two lots of everything, and of course one set of cables down in the spur. Now it's a three stage procedure. Um, the first step is to just to measure the resistance end to end on the line neutral and CPC. So we go end to end on the line conductor and we're getting a value on the meter of well, 0.52 thereabouts. I was hoping, I'm jiggling with the leads because I'm hoping to try and get the exact reading I got before, but not to worry, 0.52 will work with that one. I mean, if we look in Guidance Note 3 and we look at the tables, uh, the million per metre values for different cross-sectional areas, we'll see that that corresponds to approximately 70, 80 metres or thereabouts, without being too precise about it. If we go on to the, um, the neutral, I'm glad about that. There we're getting the 0.53. Well, the reason I say I'm glad about that is because I've just gone through these tests before and I've got set values and I've got um, a little sort of uh, sheet showing some workings out. So 0.53 is the neutral end to end. And if you look at the CPC, end to end on the CPC, and we're showing there slightly lower than I got before. Uh, 1.03 but we can work with that anyway um, so what that demonstrates to us is that um, those conductors there are continuous end to end there's no breaks in the ring main and also the um, something we're aware of is because the line and neutral are 2.5 millimeter squared and the CPC is 1.5 we expect a resistance difference between them and uh, for conductors of that size, we expect the CPC to be 1.67 times higher um, than the line or the neutral, which it is there or there or thereabouts. Uh, and as I said as well, and we looked in GN3, uh, those resistance values correspond to, you know, a specific length of cable. So if that is, you know, wildly out from uh, what you think you've installed, then that will be questionable in itself. So step one, end-to-end -end resistance. They're the values that I got previously, not a million miles away from what I got second time round. So the line was 0 0.53, uh, neutral 0 0.53, and the CPC 1.06. If we go to step two, now step two involves reconfiguring the way that the, these are set up here. And this is called the uh, figure of eight connection between the line and the neutral. Now what we're doing here is we're taking the incoming line, so you can see that, and connecting it with the outgoing neutral. And here we've got the incoming neutral, and we're connecting that with the outgoing line. So there we go, that's our figure of eight connection. And you can see the way that that's been done. Um, if we look in GN3 again, there's an explanation for this. 
Oh, but what's actually happening here on, on this page here? Um, so that's showing um, the connection that we've actually, or the way that we've connected those conductors by making uh, the, the figure of eight connection. So what we can do now is, um, well, the expected value that we uh, are looking for here, if you look at step two, because of the way that we've connected them, uh, we expect the R1, R1 plus Rn value, which is what we take at the, the socket outlet, to roughly equate to the um, the maths that we've got there. So your N to N value of your line and your neutral divided by four, and you can see the figures there that uh, from what I had previously, um, we should get approximately 0.27 at each of the socket outlets and also at that connection at the mains. Um, should get a higher value at the spur as well. And that's the one we'd record if there's space to put that on the documentation. And what that step actually proves is that there's no interconnections between the different sockets of the ring main. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I go between those two points and on the meter, I'm getting a value of, jumped around a bit, 0.27, which I'm happy about because that equates with the um, test that I did before and the values that I've got. Now what I need to do is just to prove that value at each of the socket outlets. So I'm going to take this socket adapter and if you look at where I'm putting my leads, um, they're in the barrels that will connect to the line of neutral of each of the sockets. And what I'm expecting to get across each of these sockets on the ring main is the 0.27 that I measured at the mains. So what are we getting there? 0.25, so there, thereabouts, I'm happy with that. Point two five, I'm happy with that. It's there or thereabouts. And point two point five six point two five. Again, I'm happy with that. It equates there or thereabouts to the expected values on here. Now if I go to the, the spur, what are we getting here? I'm getting 0.55, now I've got 0.58 before. Again, there or thereabouts, that's what we expect. We expect the the, uh, the values across the ring main to be consistent and any spurs to have uh, higher values. And uh, it's the highest value which is uh, gonna come from a spur which we record. So that's step two, um, R1, Rn. Now those, they, they're deliberate, the use of the capital letters in the lowercase. You can see there we've got R, uh, capital R1 and Rn, and then we're using a lowercase R1 and Rn for the end to end values that we've got previously. So, step three. Now, step three is going to give us an R1 plus R2 value, and it's also going to confirm polarity. And it's also going to be the, going to be the final confirmation of the sockets. Uh, are connected correctly. So if I take out the neutral, and if I put the, again, outgoing line conductor incoming CPC and vice versa, and that's our figure of eight connection. There we go. So what I'm expecting here at the mains and at each of the sockets outlets is, we can see here, um, that's the formula. R1 plus R2, which is the value we're gonna get, is the end to end values of R1 and R2 divided by four. So I should get uh, around about 0.4 of an ohm at each of the socket outlets. And as you can see there, uh, I previously got 0.52 of the spur, and that's the value that I'd record um, that's our R1 plus R2 value, the highest value, and that's the one that goes on the sheets. And you can see at the bottom there, uh, if all that works out correctly, then I've confirmed polarity and correct connection of the sockets as well. So let's go ahead with that. So at the mains,
0.34, I'm happy with that. It's there or thereabouts. It equates with what we've got from the uh, the formula on there. Now, if we go to each of the socket outlets, if you look at the way I'm connecting the leads into my socket adapter there, uh, um, those two barrels are going to connect with the line and the CPC of each socket. So if we go to the first one, so it was a 0.4, wasn't it, I was looking for? 0.34, that'll do, there or thereabouts. 0.34 again, there or thereabouts, I'm happy with that. And this last one. 0.35 again. I'm happy with that. And then if we go to the spare, and that should give us our highest value, and that'll be the one we record, and we're getting there 0.5. I got 0.52 before when I did it previously. So again, I'm happy with that. Now that is our R1 plus R2 value. And uh, it also confirms the correct polarity and correct connection of uh, of the socket outlets. Um, when we do step two, it proves that line and neutral are at the bottom two barrels. And it's only when we do that third test that it proves that, without looking at it from the front, that the right hand side has got to be the live. There's, there's quite a bit to take in with this particular test. And when I'm teaching electricians in class, it tends to be this one that uh, they struggle with because there's quite a lot of information coming at you, but I'd suggest if you're trying to, uh, you know, get a grip of this, to, to watch it quite a few times and get it right into your head and try to understand every step. If we go over to this particular board, now the reason I didn't use that, that board there for this test is because, again, you don't have to have the socket faces removed normally, but with this one, if you wanted to do a ring, ring test on, uh, on this installation here, we would have to remove these socket faces because if we've got them screwed back, we get parallel paths through the um, the sockets themselves and the trunking, and again, and that skews the uh, the the value of the of the CPC. So there we go, continuity testing. Any um, constructive criticism, much appreciated, because nobody knows everything, and there's always more to say.